All right, guys, on the heels of kind of walking you through the exotic weapon kiosk here at the Exotics Archive at the Tower, the Monument to Lost Lights, what I wanted to do today is just uh, pull out my personal favorite of each of the weapon types that are available in that kiosk and actually show you what they look like in action. So I'll have to make another trip back to the tower. I'll just do a quick cut uh, because I didn't want to offload all of my other important gear that I had on me, but I have loaded up uh, a majority of them. So we are just going to head over to uh, Sorrow's Harbor on the moon where there are always tons of endless enemies. Uh, this is one of the places I showed you for daily bounty, vendor bounty grinding, as well as weapon XP upgrades. It could be if you're working towards unlocking your red bar borders for weapon crafting, if you are trying to get XP uh, with kills on a weapon so that you can insert the catalyst and an exotic. There's all tons of reasons you could be coming over here to do farming. And uh, so that's where we're going to head today. We're just going to head straight over to Sorrow's Harbor on the moon and uh, hop right in and just start rotating through um, the various weapons. So I am going to be starting. Uh, this is what I have equipped for the current season. Let's just start with the sidearm. Oh, yeah. This one is so good. It's really quite silly. Um, this came from the season where Osiris was first introduced us, introduced to us in Saint 14. Uh, and gosh, what was it? Mercury was the area? I don't, I don't exactly remember. But I'm going to show you exactly what this gun is all about right here. So this is the Devil's Ruin. If I use it like a normal gun, you can see I'm just shooting things just like a normal handgun here. So I will show you yet again. Normal pistol mode. Now this is the alternate fire mode. This laser. If you hold down the trigger, instead of just shooting it and releasing it like a normal pistol, that's what it does. And that's a big, nasty, high damage resistance enemy, and I just melted him like it was nothing. So that's how it functions. And it will automatically reload at the instant that you let go of the trigger. So that's the Devil's Ruin. Uh, that's what it's about, and that's why... It is my favorite. Next, we're going to pull out Taraba. This is that crazy SMG. This is one that does uh, require you to do some raiding uh, in order to purchase from the monument because you have to uh, get it up to... Let's just kill a few more enemies here. Let's pop it into overpower mode, and this is what it does. And then it slows back down again. So this is the normal firing rate. It's a very good SMG. It's very precise. Has very low recoil. Has a nice quick clip. Just need a few more kills. And overcharge mode. It's absolutely bananas. So that is Taraba. Uh, absolutely the most OP SMG in the game by a mile. Indeed, this gun does have the fastest TTK of any weapon in the game. Um, Alright, so next I'm going to show you... Uh, nope, nope, that's current uh, season. Okay, let me just get the exotic off. You can only hold one exotic at a time. Now I'm going to show you the linear fusion rifle heavy weapon. Uh, uh, gosh, what's the name of this one? Uh, Sleeper Simulant. So we just take a big guy over there. No big deal. We'll just blast them. Just one shot everybody. And with the catalyst in, which I do have, it uh, shoots way faster. So what this does is it's a really powerful uh, linear fusion rifle on its own anyway. But it refracts its uh, shot 
through targets, so it will ricochet and hit other nearby targets. Hugely powerful. Um, this was the hard meta for the Atheon fight at the end of the Vault of Glass dungeon for a long time. Still a viable option. Um, all right, next I want to show you my favorite scout rifle in the game, the Mida uh, multi-tool. And it may be a little hard to tell. See the speed that I'm running? Now if I swap to my next gun, you'll see how much slower I'm running. And that's just a sidearm, a much smaller gun. Swap back to Mida, immediate noticeable speed increase. Now the other thing I want to show you is you see the little mini radar up on the top left of the screen. As soon as I ADS, I aim down sights, it disappears. But if I swap to the Mida and ADS, that radar stays up the whole time. Shoots very quickly, basically as fast as you can pull the trigger. Very accurate. I love this gun in PvP uh, in particular. It's okay for PvE, um, but there are other scout rifles I prefer for, for PvE. Uh, notably ones that um, have explosive payload, which this does not. But it's extremely accurate, has a big clip, fast rate of fire. You get that increased movement speed with it. This is my favorite scout that you can grab from the monument. Um, let's see, next I will show you my favorite trace rifle. That's Ager's Scepter. I'll probably have to pick up some ammo for it. Yep, so... Okay, I've got some here now. So we'll wait and we'll run back over to this next spawn point. These are very pinpoint to accurate trace rifles. This one does freeze enemies, as well as just generally melt anything that gets in its way. So that's Ager Scepter. It's worth reading about again, and uh, it works really well with some synergetic stasis builds. That's how I would recommend using it, uh, but we'll swap off of that. Ah, my favorite hand cannon in the game. What I'm going to do, I'm going to swap off of my currently equipped exotic gloves here in just a minute. But you see these green things it leaves behind? Those are the remnants that uh, give you more power. This does do damage over time, so if I just do a single bullet, say, on that big guy there, it'll hit him for the damage, and you'll see he's still ticking. That's the DOT damage that is also packed into the gun. So this is very, very powerful. Very good gun. Now, if you're a warlock and you also have the necrotic grips, this works symbiotically with Thorn, and then when you get a kill, it starts spreading poison to everybody around that's nearby. You can absolutely clear mobs like a hero solo with this thing, even in dungeons. High-end content, uh, this is just a ridiculous combination. It's very fun. This is still, to this day, one of my absolute favorite builds in the game. Using the Thorn in tandem with the Necrotic Grip Gauntlets. It is just an absolute gas. Um, it's... Uh, it's so strong, it just melts everything. I mean, it just melts everything. That's the best way I can describe how this functions. It melts everything. Like, oh, what do you have to take down? Pull out Necrotic, along with the Thorn, and just watch everybody melt. I shoot one, and it just starts spreading to all of them. I kill one, and it spreads to all of them. That's how this works together. And this is already a really great gun. Um, it, it just feels really good to shoot. It's very accurate. The recoil is not as bad as it looks on the screen. Indeed, it pretty much comes right back to dead center. So it's actually really easy to control. I really, really, really like this handgun. Uh, next, we're going to swap over to the Wither Horde, which I will have to pick up some ammo for here. Um, this is kind of the jack-of-all-trades weapon that does blight damage on the ground uh, that I was telling you about. So it is a grenade launcher, but what it does is this. It leaves that blight damage pool on the ground, and anybody that walks into it is just going to start getting melted. So you can shoot targets with it, or you can just leave it up. 
as a deterrent and have it just kill anybody that walks across that path. It's great here. It's also great in PvP if you're on a control the point game mode. So you shoot one at the ground and then like mods to the flame, they all walk in it and end up killing themselves. That's Wither Horde. If in doubt of what to bring into a particular type of fight, Wither Horde is always a viable option. And I think that shows you all of them that are my favorites. I do have a couple other that are at, in fact, I may as well just show you while I have it on my person. Here's Rat King. Uh, Rat King, you get a kill. Ah, we'll have to find somebody. Okay, I'm just going to come up and shoot this guy. Automatic pistol. I reload after the kill. I turn invisible for a few seconds. This is really powerful, particularly in PvP. It's very accurate. Uh, does a pretty good bit of damage. Um, if you're not the Invisible Hunter class, this is one way you can put invisibility on yourself is with the Rat King. Very fun gun. Uh, not my favorite handgun, but I figured since I already have it on my person, I may as well show it to you. So we're just going to cut here. I'm going to take a quick travel back to the tower to re-up on some weapons, and then I'll show you the remainder. Okay, guys, quick trip uh, over to the tower, and we are back at the Altar of Sauro on the moon. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you is Yatin. This is a fusion rifle, energy weapon slot. This is not to be confused with the sleeper simulant uh, fusion I showed you earlier. That, that was a linear fusion rifle. This is a standard fusion rifle. They do make a distinction. So... That's what Yatin does. Um, let me find a target that's further away. And it just heat seeking tracks right onto the target. If they move, it will still track onto them. So that's Yatin. Uh, very funny gun. Uh, people that are really good with it love to pull it out in PvP. It is a bit annoying to fight against, but well worth considering. It, it is a fun gun. Uh, next is going to be Le Monarch. This is the bow that does poison after a full draw and a quick release. It will poison the target. So, poison, a full draw, then a quick release. So just watch for the bars to fill, and then you release it. Uh, that's how that works. Uh, the bows in this game are a little, little hard to showcase most of how they function because they're very strong um, in this game. But that's La Monarch. Uh, the next I'm going to show you is... Uh, let me just swap off to that. I actually have two I'm going to show you here. I'm first going to show you Bad Juju because they're both... It just depends on what you what what you prefer, what you're looking to get out of the gun. So this is Bad Juju. It is a pulse rifle. It is full automatic. And as you get kills, it will refill its ammo. It will um, start to apply its perk called String of Curses, which uh, makes it stronger. And it also generates... Uh, your super ability energy as you get kills. So, so long as you're cleaning them up, you can just stand here endlessly with the trigger held down and just mop up mobs. Uh, this is how I like to use this gun. Uh, you also notice as I'm getting kills here that my super bar is filling up slightly. Uh, the next one, indeed, yeah, it filled up right there. Next one I'm going to show you is Outbreak Perfected. This would be the next of these that I would strongly consider. These are my two favorite. Uh, this one's not automatic right now, uh, but what it does, this is the one that puts nanite swarms, sets those things out. And depending on the number of nanites that attach to the target, uh, will determine how much damage it actually does. And it will start to spread if you kill the target within nanites, it'll start seeking out additional targets. So this is a very cool, very powerful weapon. It has super, super low recoil. Uh, it's got a fast rate of fire, a good size clip. Very, very good pulse rifle. One I would highly recommend. This or Bad Juju, you can't really go wrong with either. I think most people would probably suggest Outbreak Perfected. 
I would as well just for ease of use. Uh, but uh, Bad Juju is definitely worth your time as well. Just depends on what you're looking to get out of it. Um, next, we're going to swap. Uh, just have to put a regular weapon on again. We're going to show you duality. And that is the last weapon I've got on me now. There may be one more that I wanted to show you, but I'll have to backtrack to figure it out. There we go. Here's some ammo bricks. So let me load this. So I will show you hip fire like a normal shotgun. And then if you ADS, it becomes a pinpoint slug. That's duality. It's very powerful. Um, you'll notice, obviously, a shotgun. So even with pinpoint slug, you're not going to get the same range out of it that you would with, say, a rifle-type weapon. Uh, but that's how this one functions. And uh, that is the last of them I have on me. I will do one more cut, run back to the tower, pick up the last uh, weapon or weapons I wanted to show you. And that will wrap it up. So we'll cut and be right back. All right, guys, so I ran back up to the tower and uh, realized that what's left, I mean, it's stuff that I wouldn't really highly recommend anyway, some of which I know what they are. I just haven't purchased, purchased them because uh, making your decision on your exotic piece of armor and your exotic weapon is a pretty big one since you can only have one of each. You can't load an exotic on each slot in this game. You get one piece of exotic gear from which to choose and one exotic weapon. So that is my top picks, a little bit of gameplay for for you. Uh, there are certainly others up there that are absolutely worth your time. Um, it's personal preference. These are just my personal favorites and opinions, and they're all good weapons. It just depends on what you want to get out of the gun. Now, it is worth uh, noting that this is not all of the exotics in the game. You get uh, the majority of them from going down quests, like you'll notice um, this right here, Sunshot. This is one of my favorite hand cannons in the game. It's a bit of a relic, but it's still powerful. It's the only 150 RPM archetype hand cannon, hand cannon left in the game. Um, and it's part of my current season's build uh, that all synergizes together. Uh, but there's a lot of weapons like that uh, that you don't get from the kiosk, but you can still get them if you go down the quest path. Um, a lot of them are tied to raids. A lot are tied to dungeons. A lot are just tied to story missions, pickups, and discoveries from playing the game uh, that you can still do if you have the related DLC. Uh, but anyway, guys, uh, that's going to do it for today. I hope that seeing the guns in action helped to give you an idea of uh, at least what my personal favorites are all about. And uh, if you find any value from that and decide you want to try to pick one of those up, uh, yeah, I, I totally don't blame you. They're all viable. They all serve a great purpose. And it just depends on, you know, the weapon type it, or types that you gravitate towards based on the builds you like playing or if you're, you know, PvEing or PvPing. There's a time and a place for everything in this game. And that's part of what makes it so fun the seemingly limitless options. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today. I appreciate you checking in as always. We will catch you on the next one.